It is no secret that the world that we are living in right now is rife with a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. And I have seen over the past four years, an increasing number of clients, both in my individual work and in the groups and workshops that I facilitate, experiencing something called financial survivor's guilt. My name is Lindsay. I'm a certified financial therapist, licensed social worker, author of the book, The Financial Anxiety Solution. And my business, Mind Money Balance, helps people at the intersection of money and mental health. When I'm talking about financial survivor's guilt, let's just back up and remind you of what survivor's guilt is so that we can layer on the finance piece. Survivor's guilt is a response that can happen when a person or a group of people survive a traumatic event when other people did not or other people were harmed more than they were. To give a concrete example, let's say a person was in a car accident with other people and they were able to walk away pretty much unscathed, whereas other people in the vehicle were not. That person may go on to feel guilty. They may experience repetitive or intrusive thoughts, wondering why they were spared when other people weren't. And it can harm them psychologically speaking because somehow they feel like they did something bad to be able to survive something or to survive with less harm than other people in that scenario. People who experience survivor guilt may go on to experience physical responses to it that look a little bit like post traumatic stress disorder, such as experiencing a racing heart, having intrusive thoughts or repetitive thoughts about the instance, struggling to fall asleep or stay asleep, having flashbacks to the event, or when they are able to fall asleep, experiencing nightmares. They may also endorse feelings of helplessness or hopelessness, and it can also show up physically outside of the racing heart and difficulty sleeping with things like stomach aches, irritability, and anxiety. When we think about survivor guilt and what it has to do with money, it can happen on an interpersonal level or it can happen on a more macro level. For example, it can happen on an interpersonal level if you were at a big corporation and there was a huge layoff where 15% of the workforce was laid off, but your job was not impacted. You might experience financial survivor guilt because so many of your colleagues are now out of work and out of income. On a more global scale, you may experience financial survivor guilt if you are a middle income or higher middle income earner and you are understanding just how much of a differential exists between people who are lower or lower middle income earners and just feeling overall icky about the huge gap that can exist, especially in our country, when we are experiencing what economists are calling a K-shaped recovery. According to economists, a K-shaped recovery is where people who were at the upper or middle upper earners, their income has continued to go up as we are coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic, whereas people who were at the bottom or the bottom middle and were struggling, their income they have seen to go down or their capacity to grow their net worth has dwindled. So there's this k shape. That's hard to do. There's a K, K. What do I have that is a letter K? This is my diagram, <laughs> a pen and lip gloss. So there's this K-shaped recovery where people on the upper end are earning more and are growing their net worth, whereas people on the bottom are losing their net worth and it is dwindling or they are having a harder time recovering from COVID-19 when you include things like the return to office penalty, inflation at record high, and student loans not being forgiven as we thought they would be forgiven. So who can be impacted? In today's context, with collective traumatic events such as recovering from COVID-19, the ongoing wars that are happening in other places in the world, and the vast economic disparities, almost anybody who has an income or who has a job or who has a positive net worth can experience financial survivor guilt. In terms of what makes a person more likely to experience this cluster of symptoms that we have around survivor guilt is something that we tend to want, aka people who have higher levels of empathy are more likely to experience financial survivor guilt. The hypothesis behind this is a person with higher empathy is a person who is more likely to imagine that they can understand what somebody else's lived experience might be like. Therefore, they can more easily put themselves in the shoes of somebody else. And when we are able to do that, yes, we are able to feel for other people more deeply, but we are also able to experience more guilt because we can imagine what it would be like to be somebody else. 
The other thing that can happen when we have this higher level of empathy and might be more likely to experience financial survivor guilt is we have this thing where we wonder what could we individually have done to prevent somebody else from experiencing financial hardship. It's a lose-lose scenario because if you're like, oh, I got this job, but my roommate didn't, you might be thinking, okay, well, if I rescind my job offer, maybe this person can get it. But then what ends up happening is that then you don't have a job. Like this is imagining that this could actually happen, right? We struggle with the guilt of having good fortune and that guilt of feeling like this was somehow like luck bestowed upon us can make us feel extra guilty, which is why it's a lose-lose scenario. So yes, having empathy is a good thing, but somehow imagining that you can undo harm that has come other people's way is not going to help. Instead, here are some tips on how to dial down financial survivor guilt that might be helpful for you. So one, personally practicing gratitude. It can sound so counterintuitive to practice gratitude for something that you have experienced that is positive when somebody else is not able to extend that type of gratitude. But having gratitude every day for the handful of things that you have access to or are able to have, especially when it comes to experiencing financial survivor's guilt, can help you to feel better. Research shows again and again that practicing daily gratitude is a mentally strengthening practice and is something that can help to cultivate our mental resilience. It may look like, I am thankful that I have a job today that provides me with income. Or I am thankful that even though I had long COVID, it didn't develop to the point where I had to leave my job, right? These types of things can be really helpful, even though it can feel a little bit icky when we're pushing back against financial survivor's guilt. Two, remembering that not everything in life is a finite pie. What I mean by that is that you having something doesn't always immediately take away that from somebody else having access to that thing. During the early days of the pandemic, Stephanie O'Connell Rodriguez tweeted something about this that reminded us that you filing for unemployment does not take away somebody else's ability to file for unemployment, AKA it is not a pie where if I get one slice, you don't get to have access to that slice. So reminding yourself that sacrificing your yourself and your personal financial wellness is actually not for the greater good of the community. So that's number two. Number three, if you have some financial privilege, some career privilege, some time privilege, and you are feeling like you want to give back in a meaningful way, ask yourself, what are the things that I am able to help with? Am I a whiz at being able to review resumes? Can I volunteer at the library to review resumes? Or can I volunteer at my alma mater's career center to review resumes and edit them? Can I share with my network that I'm happy to make connections to other people that I know on LinkedIn if they are looking for jobs? What are the specific tangible things that you can help with that don't sacrifice your financial well-being that you can offer? That is a great thing to do on like the interpersonal side. When it comes to the more global side, the more macro side, beyond these individual actions, what are some broader community ways that we can push back against that survivor's guilt? To be clear, these things all intersect, but these are more like the macro. So if you're listening to this and you're like, Lindsay, that sounds hyper individualistic, realize that we are um, all interconnected here so it was hard to kind of divvy these things up. Acknowledge that two things can be true at once. This is a staple of dialectical behavioral therapy or DBT and it's this idea that two things that are seemingly in opposition can actually exist at the same time. For example, it is true that you have a retirement plan, whereas somebody else does not. Both of those things are true and can exist at the exact same time. Supporting local businesses that are in alignment with your values whenever you can is usually a net positive. When we spend a dollar in our community, 80 cents of that dollar tends to stay in that community. So if you are able to buy your groceries from a local grocer, do that. If you are able to buy your coffee from a local cafe, do that. Anytime you can spend your dollars in your community, that is usually a net positive thing. Speaking about community-based care and when it comes to our dollars, is tipping generously if you are purchasing a service, like going out to eat or having groceries delivered, tipping generously helps to circulate money within your community. 
Next is making sure you are engaging in your civic duties. It can feel like a freaking dumpster fire. And when we experience financial survivor's guilt, we can completely freeze and feel like we don't know what to do. Instead, I invite you to do one small thing that can help move the needle towards creating a positive ripple effect. This may be making sure people in your community are registered to vote and know how to get to the polls. This might be volunteering on election day to drive people to the polls. This may be making sure that you have an action plan in place with your neighbors to get to the polls on voting day. Notice how I'm talking about voting a lot because these things matter when we actually show up to the polls and vote. Other civil engagement things that you can do, making sure that you're right writing, calling, emailing your senators, your legislators, your elected officials to make sure that they are acting in alignment with the things that you voted them into place to do. You can make sure your dollars are going where you want them to go and directing them away from places you don't want them to go. This is called an economic protest and you are able to engage in it anytime. These are some examples of how you can push back against survivor's guilt. Remember that guilt is this idea that you did something bad or you made a mistake. I want you to remember that when it comes to financial survivor's guilt, it is actually misplaced guilt. You most likely did not do anything that you should be ashamed of that was bad or that was a mistake. We live in a world in which there are so many circumstantial things that happen to us. Yes, we can do things to take action, but there are many things in life that just happen and we happen to be the recipient of them. So if you are feeling guilty about having a good job or about having good benefits or about having good health care, doing the opposite of that thing, quitting that job, getting rid of health care or getting rid of those benefits actually does nothing positive for you or for your community. You need to be practicing financial self-care. And when you are practicing financial self-care and taking care of yourself financially, that's when you can give back. That's when that positive ripple effect can happen. So that is what I invite you to do. As we come to the end of today's video, remember that trauma Olympics or trying to compare yourself to who had it worse or who had it better is a lose-lose game. It does not benefit anyone. Instead, take meaningful action for the things that you can control, release the things that you cannot, and do what you can do to stay emotionally regulated, keeping your nervous system in balance, and giving back in a meaningful way that's aligned with your financial values. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.